Chapter 1. The results of good habits are multiplicative, like the growth of money due to compound interest. Positive compounding occurs in terms of production, knowledge, and connections, whether good or bad behaviors are involved. Stress, bad thoughts, and fury are examples of negative compounding. When you do one extra task each day, your productivity grows. On that particular day, it seemed insignificant, but over the course of a career, it adds up. Your brain has more time to think about more essential things as you automate parts of your chores. You can take advantage of knowledge's potential to grow through time by committing to lifelong learning. You are forced to think differently and are exposed to novel concepts when you read. Compound interest is produced in your relationships as you become more nice. People are more likely to provide a helping hand to someone who has shown them kindness. Furthermore, tension barely builds up. At first, stressors may appear to be isolated, but over time, they accumulate to cause serious health problems. Worry about parenting, gridlock, a modest rise in blood pressure, etc., are common sources of concern. Worry then multiplies into more serious issues. Negative thinking accumulates. You will experience a bad reality if you accumulate negative thoughts. Be aware of your thoughts about yourself and other people. Outrage intensifies. Microaggressions frequently combine to cause riots and other forms of civic upheaval. However, we like to blame it on a single incident as if it were unique. Small changes don't seem substantial until they pass a threshold or tipping point. The plateau of latent potential is the term for this threshold. You need patience if you want to achieve your goals. You'll discover a straightforward yet efficient plan in this summary that will get you from where you are to where you want to go in your life. Any area of a person's life that needs to be transformed can be transformed using these concepts. Did you realize? James Clear asserts that at the end of a year, a daily improvement or regression of 1% will make you 37 times better or worse. Chapter 2. It takes a lot of effort to break a bad habit. It is quite challenging to develop healthy habits, and it may be even more challenging to break unhealthy ones. It's challenging, but not impossible. There is a hack, in reality. Spend time developing an efficient method that enables you to move closer to the goal rather than concentrating on the ultimate result or goal you aim to reach, which may seem so far away. Systems outline how to get there, while goals specify where you want to go. Anyone. Also, make goals. But those who succeed in achieving these objectives are those who have developed a successful plan for doing so. The system of constant, modest improvements that winners undertake that aid in achieving their goal is what distinguishes winners from failures. Clearly James. Goals come and go. Everyone wants results, yet with this mentality, issues frequently recur. Making the right process and automating procedures are the keys to lasting transformation. The joy that results from reaching goals is frequently fleeting. Additionally, those who prioritize their aims postpone their satisfaction. You appreciate each stage leading up to the objective when you approach problems from a system's first perspective. You are more inclined to keep doing something if you enjoy it. You are liberated from a constrained approach to attaining your goals by adopting a system's first philosophy. On your path to success, you occasionally have to take a detour because of life. An effective system adapts quickly to novel circumstances while keeping the end in mind. Developing sustainable processes is frequently hampered by goals. When there is nothing else to keep you going once a goal has been reached, old behaviors tend to recur. There are several methods for achieving a goal, such as losing 20 pounds, if that is what you set as your objective. However, if you didn't develop an efficient strategy that aids in your weight management, you can relapse to old behaviors once you reach the 20 pounds mark. You're playing to become a true champion, not just to win one game. True champions are also created by atomic habits. The fundamental units of molecules are called atoms. Atomic habits aid in the development of effective systems. Chapter 3. Because it makes the change sustainable, changing who you are is more crucial than concentrating on what you want to accomplish. The challenges we have when trying to change our habits stem from two factors. 
We attempt to alter the incorrect stuff. We attempt to alter improperly. Behavior change has three layers. Outcome, process, and identity. Results are determined by what you get. Processes are all about your actions. Your beliefs define who you are. The issue with creating long-lasting habits is the direction of change. Your priority should be character development rather than success. Before changing one's actions, one must modify one's beliefs. What you do doesn't matter as much as who you are. You are more likely to keep a habit if it becomes a part of who you are rather than just something you do. Spend some time reflecting on your goals. Then, consider what you need to do to become that person. Behavior is frequently a reaction to or an expression of identity. To become the best version of yourself, you must question your current beliefs. When you adhere to the customs you were raised with, you are in cognitive slumber. You will only change to the extent that you become conscious of the scripts you are living out in your life and alter them. For instance, your math skills are not poor. Your past experiences have simply served to condition you to believe that arithmetic is not for you. Your academic performance has provided you with data throughout time to support the notion that you struggle with math. You can change the way you think or believe about math to create a new reality for yourself. Your actions may enable you to improve your identification. Chapter 4. It is easier to understand identity-based behaviors in terms of feedback loops. Identity and habits are interconnected. It has two directions. However, it is crucial to focus more on the identity side of things than results. Your actions will reflect your values if you put them in charge of your life's car. The ability of habits to alter your self-perception is their most significant benefit. Edward Thorndike, a psychologist, discovered that cats repeat specific activities when they are rewarding, but avoid them when the effects are unpleasant. Trial and error is the first step in habit building. A recurring behavior that the brain automates because it finds it gratifying is referred to as a habit. You can use habits to help you save energy. Habits are mental efficiencies acquired by experience. The level of brain activity declines when habits are formed. You learn to tune out everything else and focus only on the indicators that indicate achievement. Clearly James. You can free up mental space by automating the routine tasks of life. Making mental space for thinking is the key to creativity. You can develop strategies and concepts that have a wider scope and more depth when there is room for fresh ideas. Creating habits gives you extra time to do the things you want to do. Chapter 5. All habits are created in a four-stage process, yearning, response, and reward, according to the habit loop. A cue is something that causes the brain to initiate a particular behavior. Once triggered, the action makes you crave it. Your emotions will remain in a chaotic state until you give in to this urge. You receive a reward for giving in to the craving. The habit loop is created when what is rewarded is repeated. Every habit has as its purpose to reap the benefits it offers. You can see the reward in the line. You then act out of a desire for the benefit. To receive the reward, you must work hard. Service is recognized in two ways. Satisfaction education. Cueing occurs at all four levels. For a behavior to develop, there must be a response and a reward. They can be divided into two phases. The problem phase, which includes the line and the urge, and the solution phase, which includes the action and the reward. There are four laws of behavior modification that you can adhere to in order to develop excellent habits. Make it clear. Make it appealing. Make it simple. Make it fulfilling. Inverting these laws helps get rid of undesirable habits as well. Make it vanish. Make it unpleasant, challenging, and unsatisfying. Chapter 6. You must become conscious of your habits since awareness is the first step in changing behavior. Your brain becomes more adept at recognizing the cues with practice. Many people don't realize how many tasks our brains already automate. Automatic instructions from the brain to the proper bodily components control things like hair growth, blood flow, respiration, digestion, etc. You are more than just your aware self. So that you don't have to pay attention to what you're doing, 
you can educate your brain to automate positive behaviors. The line eventually becomes unneeded. Your mind has developed the habit of doing it automatically. When you perform an action subconsciously, it becomes a habit. The first step in changing behavior is raising awareness. Take into account learning to drive. At first, it's challenging to multitask since you're paying attention to every tiny detail. However, with practice, driving becomes instinctive, and you are able to carry out several commands at once. The Japanese railway system uses pointing and yelling as a tactic to reduce mistakes that can result in accidents. The operators point at things while shouting commands. Every item is called out, along with instructions on what to do with it. This seemingly insignificant activity reduces dangers by bringing to awareness previously unconscious concepts. Maintaining a habit scorecard is an additional crucial stage in behavior modification. This scorecard includes a list of your everyday habits, whether they are positive, negative, or neutral. Good behaviors receive a plus sign, plus, whereas harmful habits receive a minus sign. A good net score means you have more positive behaviors overall, whereas a negative net score means you have more negative habits. At first, don't rush into changing your behaviors. Before deciding what to do about the results of your decisions, observe and learn from them. Did you know that pointing and calling can cut errors by as much as 85% and accidents by as much as 30%? Chapter 7. Using Implementation Purpose and Habit Stacking, Two Powerful Techniques, You Can Start and Maintain the Behaviors You Want. An action's timing and location are stated in the implementation intention. The formula for implementing an intention is, I will act at this time and in this place. Although there are many weights for your actions, time and location are the two most typical cues. Intentions for implementation take advantage of both of these cues. For habit stacking to work, you must match habits that go well together, particularly a new habit. You can associate drinking your morning coffee with reading the news if the habit already exists. When you connect a new habit to an existing one, it's simpler to learn it. By mastering the foundations of habit stacking, a whole network of habits can emerge. It basically states that I'll practice this new behavior each time I practice a particular existing habit. When you choose the appropriate signal to start the chain, habit stacking is effective. You don't have to worry about time or place with habit stacking. These specifics are ingrained in the current habit. The methods covered in this chapter are useful for putting the first rule of behavior modification into practice. They produce vivid cues that make it simple to evoke the new behavior when used properly. Your surroundings frequently influence the decisions you make, which compromise your integrity. Delicate manner. Your surroundings can influence how you act. Kurt Lewin, a psychologist, conceived the theory in 1936 when he wrote the equation B equals FPE, which describes behavior as a function of a person in their environment. Less than 20 years later, an economist discovered that advertising follows the same rule. Hawkins Stern is his name. According to Stern, consumers who are unfamiliar with a product may develop a need for it after first seeing it. The phenomenon was referred to as suggestion impulsive buying. Chapter 8. Every living thing has a unique way of perceiving and comprehending the world. Through their sensory nerve system, humans perceive. Vision is the strongest of all of our senses. Of the 11 million sensory receptors in humans, 10 million are dedicated to vision. The advantage is that you may design a situation in which you observe what you want to observe. By providing visual clues for a habit, you might make it more appealing. It is possible to cultivate beneficial behaviors using the same method that encourages negative ones. When there are more triggers than your surroundings for the habit, a habit is more likely to develop. An enabling environment is necessary for self-control to flourish. Scientists have discovered that those with excellent self-control are those who have planned their life to steer clear of indications that cause them to lose control. Change your surroundings to get the outcomes you want in life. When you are suddenly placed in a compromising situation, self-control is effective. It's just a matter of time before you give in to temptation when you have to fight against it every day. 
Make your surroundings as effective as possible to save your willpower for when it's most needed. These days, that environment also includes the online world. Chapter 9. Attractive chances prompt a quick response from the brain. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that may be measured by researchers to determine the precise instant a craving takes place. The development of habits depends on dopamine. Most addictive substances emit a large amount of dopamine, making them challenging to quit. Dopamine is also released during routine actions including eating, sleeping, and drinking water. The brain is more influenced by the expectation of a reward than by the actual reward. The brainstem, the nucleus accumbens, the ventral tegmental region, the dorsal striatum, the amygdala, and a piece of the prefrontal cortex are among the areas of the brain that are involved in anticipating reward. Every action is prompted by expectation. Temptation bundling is the practice of engaging in both the behavior that attracts you and the behavior you enjoy. A pre-max principal use is temptation bundling. According to this, less likely behaviors will be reinforced by more likely ones. The actions we prefer are determined by our cultural settings. We accept actions that the group applauds because of our intrinsic need to belong to a group or tribe. This group may include people we look up to, those from our own backgrounds, or our close family members. People copy the behaviors of their tribe, their friends, and the wealthy. Trump frequently exhibits individual behavior in groups. A non-bully may wind to bullying others to fit in with the group if they hang out with other bullies all the time. When it comes to habit building, frequency matters more than duration. If you want to create a habit, repeated practice is more effective than complex preparation and implementation. Making it simple is the third rule of behavior modification. When you do anything again, you should do it gradually to ensure that you continue to develop the new habit. Make sure it is something you can finish quickly to remove as many barriers as you can from its application. Use the two-minute limit. Every new habit, according to this, should only take two minutes or less to complete. Only once you've gotten the hang of it should the time increase. If you want to break a habit, do the opposite. Make the exercise challenging. You will gradually get rid of the habit's cues if you restrict your access to them. Chapter 10. If you want excellent behaviors to stick, don't put off rewarding them. When we engage in an activity that gives us pleasure, we are likely to continue doing it. The human brain has evolved to give preference to recent rewards over future ones. Demanding consequences for habits you want to break can be made easier with an accountability partner. People often try to win over others' approval. As a result, we want to keep the friends we make. Making progress is simpler when the habit you're building is in line with your values and doesn't call for you to engage in activities you have no experience with. When you focus on projects that stretch you but your ability to do them, your motivation is at its peak. We often grow bored with mundane and dull activities, thus this challenge is crucial. The satisfaction comes from overcoming a challenge of some kind. Deliberate practice helps you stay sharp and alerts you to mistakes that routine would miss. For instance, after learning to drive, a person could find it challenging to continue to recognize areas of their driving that need to be improved. However, purposeful practice forces you to constantly push yourself in order to develop a sense of awareness that alerts you to potential blind spots. The combination of habits and intentional practice leads to mastery. Conclusion. Habits change when you make a long-term commitment to 1% daily improvement. These advancements fit together like atoms to create an entire organism. Therefore, concentrate on developing systems that let you stack these atoms. After you have achieved certain milestones or goals that you have set for yourself, a focus on processes guarantees that you continue to progress. Something must be given a meaning before it can serve as a cue. It won't be feasible to crave standing in line if you don't become aware of it. The secret to happiness is being satisfied with your existing circumstances. When a new want appears, happiness vanishes. We look for the mental representation of pleasure that we create. The sense of contentment does not arrive until we achieve this image. The pursuit of desire results in pleasure. Behavior is driven by want rather than by intelligence.
you will eventually adopt the desired behavior if you create a desire for it. Emotions motivate behavior. Even when there are sound reasons to act a certain way, you are motivated to respond to them through emotion. Prior to action, there is desire. What we do is determined by our feelings. Only after performing an activity do we evaluate it. We receive reminders later when these acts are pleasing to our brains. Keep in mind what makes you happy while you repeat these behaviors. Try it. Make a scorecard for your habits to see whether they are net beneficial or net bad for you. Apply the appropriate techniques from this summary to the behaviors you want to create and one habit you want to stop.